Big boy, big boy on the rails. that I picked up at the Spring Omaha train show. Well, in this video, we're going to have a look at one of the items that I picked up there. It was really quite an extensive project compared to the other things that I picked up. And what that is, are these Marks number 62 diesels. Now, when these first left the factory back in the 50s, they were both powered units. And somebody had played with them quite a bit. And then somebody got hold of them and basically took them apart and was stealing parts off of them. This particular one they had taken the front trucks off of. See, I've already replaced that and left the motor. The motor didn't run because it had damage to it and there were no couplers with it. This one had the front truck and no motor and of course no coupler. So I took the two of them, used a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of tinkering and I put them back together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look today at a little bit of where they started from and what I did to get them back ready for the track. So, uh, so back and enjoy as we're going to take a look at some of the repairs I did to these and then we're gonna go ahead and run it. Thanks for watching. Also picked up these two B and O uh, locomotives. One didn't have a motor in it, and the other one was missing the front trucks, but had a motor. Went to put them together, but I found that this part was broken in the motor. So where it's supposed to be hooked to the windings, the wire is broken. So we're going to have to find our way around that so we can put something together on this so that we can get it working together, to, working again. Now what I've done here is I've taken apart the, uh, taking the motor out <clears throat> so we can kind of have a look at see what kind of repairs that I've made. Uh, you saw in that little clip from the last video that this fiber board here, this whole section out front here was broken off. So what I did was I took one of a clip off of a loaf of bread, hope my wife don't find out, trimmed it down and used it as kind of a splint 
to hold that fiber board together. Now, here's the, here's that wire off of the windings from the E unit right here. And I took a fine piece of wire off of one of the uh, Evan Design LED lights, just took about an inch worth of that wire, soldered it to the wire coming off the winding, and then soldered it over here where the power comes in. And lo and behold, it works. It actually runs and the E unit cycles. Well, the E unit worked a little bit and you'll see that as I, as this uh, video goes on, it was cycling, but it wasn't holding in place and it was cycling in and out. So I shot a little bit of electronics cleaner and if you ever go to do that on one of these Marx motors, this hole right here, you shoot it right up in there, and then right up through here, in this area here, up in there. Now, when you use that electronics cleaner, you know, you shoot it up there, you gotta leave it sit for a while so that all evaporates out of there. Otherwise, you're gonna have a spontaneously flaming, smoking motor, which is exciting for the moment, but it's not real good for things. Well, that got it to work a little. Then I'm gonna tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody. But I also took some WD-40 and shot it up in there. Just a little, just a little squirt. Not too much. And she took off. Don't know what it is about it because, you know, everything I read about that WD-40, it leaves some sort of a film, but for, this isn't the first E unit that I've had that has responded favorably to that. But don't use too much of it. If you're gonna use some of that WD-40, don't use too much, just a little squirt. And like I say, as the video goes on, you're gonna see just how well this motor now runs. Now the other problem it had was it was missing the coupler on the back. Well, I had bought some parts at the train show. And this coupler was part of one of the things that I bought. Well, it was uh, bent for a specific use, which I would never use it for. So I cut it down. I cut down the large part of the coupler, drilled a hole and run a nut up through there. Now, or run the bolt up through there and then the nut down here, I always use a lock nut down here, but because it's so wide, I just had to bend this plate here out, just a fraction, just so it wouldn't touch. Because what was happening was every time it would start up, then this would hit, get a little bit of movement, and then it would touch that, and it would short out. But now I've got all that done, I also put this on here for a spacer because the body was sitting so low on here and it was dragging in the front. So it was like there was something isn't bent quite right. And I'm not sure that just looking at the plate here, this looks like it's straight. But for whatever reason, I put this little spacer in that. That did help quite a bit. Now this is pretty much how this one looked when I got it. It had the front truck, had the wire. It didn't have a bulb, I had to put a bulb in it. And so just to fix that motor, the motor is actually from the other one. The motor was actually in this one and just had to fix the motor and put it in there and I had me a running locomotive. So once I had a running locomotive, well then what am I gonna do with this shell? 
This shell didn't have a front truck. I had taken the motor out of it. But the odd thing about this one was at the back. It had a slot over here and a slot over here. And then the little piece of metal be be below the door was hanging down. And I'm not sure what they were trying to do, but what I did, I just folded that piece of door up underneath. I had to bend these in just a little so they wouldn't be sticking out stabbing me. And then I decided I would make a dummy out of it. Now, these don't have couplers at the front. They don't have the slots or anything. So I took my Dremel tool and I cut me a slot at the front. And then I went and bent it out just a little bit or bent it in just a little bit so that, that the coupler could move pretty freely. They also have these tabs that hold the, this plate right here in place. They were all bent out like they were going to take that plate out. So what I did, I just went ahead and then completed removing that plate, put a, a bolt and lock nut to hold this truck on here. And then because it didn't have a headlight, I put a couple of washers in there to hold the coupler. Now, that still left me with a problem for the rear wheels because on a, on a regular uh, dummy, here's a, here's a factory made dummy. It actually has a plate. See, there's the, the tabs for that plate. This has the indentions for that for that plate, but this one here actually has a plate and that holds those rear wheels. So what, what could I do? I didn't have that plate because this was a powered unit to begin with. Well, you know, I'm pretty cheap and I won't say I'm much of a handyman, but I came up with this little device. Yeah, I know it's not a device. It's just a block of two by four. And run a wood screw up through the bottom to hold the, the truck in place with the coupler. I also painted it black here so that it wouldn't look too garish. And then ran a screw down in through the hole that would originally have held the motor into the top here. And as you'll see in the later part of the video, works just fine as a dummy. So that's all the secrets that I put together on putting these back on the track.